Philadelphia Eagles, what happened? Uh, you show up to the game dressed in all black, looking so cool. Say, so, oh, it's just a normal game to us. Clearly it wasn't. You were talking back and forth to 49ers players all offseason say, oh, it wouldn't matter if you had a quarterback who could throw the ball. We still would have beaten you. We'll prove it to you next regular season. Well, you had the chance in Philadelphia, and you fell flat on your face. Your quarterbacks look scared to tackle. Your quarterback looked like he wasn't an MVP frontrunner, which he no longer is, thankfully. Your defense woeful. Uh, your D lineman of high regard bullied by Trent Williams. Your offensive line, eh, couldn't really do the tush push all that well. And finally, your skill players were simply inferior to what the 49ers rolled out there. San Francisco dominated the Eagles. The final score was closer than it actually was. That game could have been 50 to nothing for all it mattered. And this shows that there is clearly a top dog in the NFC now. I have seen all I needed to. The Vikings may match up well against them, but the 49ers are clearly the best team in the NFC. I'd say they're the best team in football. They might be the new betting favorite in Vegas to win the Super Bowl. Big win for the 49ers, knocked the Eagles back down to earth, proving that they weren't quite as good as everyone thought. They were a little bit fraudulent, 10-2, and 10-1, and, and now we get to hear Brock Purdy MVP narratives. Brock Purdy isn't an MVP candidate. He's but the we MVP don't, front runner. We don't, need to, we don't need to have Brock Purdy MVP front runner conversations just quite yet. Maybe we'll have in this podcast, maybe not. But what happened in this game is exactly what I expected to happen. And I want to preface this by saying the Eagles... They're still a very good team, but they are a flawed team. It's been four weeks in a row now. The offense hasn't showed up in a big way. I mean, they barely got to overtime with a win against the Bills. They struggled to beat the Cowboys, who got out early and quick against them. The Chiefs dominated them on the ground, but had a bunch of drop issues and issues we've seen from the Chiefs this season and the Eagles' talent prevailed in that game. So then in this game, when they're playing a team that is probably the best roster in the NFL, with one of the best coaches in the NFL, they played a complete game, the offense did their thing, and they didn't let that Eagles offense back into the game. At this point, we have to acknowledge the secondary, it's not getting any better. They have the third most pass yards allowed in the NFL right now. Their run defense, Christian McCaffrey didn't even look that great. Against the Chiefs, their run defense didn't look great. So is their run defense getting worse? now. The Eagles need to get things figured out on the defensive side of the ball because the way things stand now, an above average passing attack, if they play the Vikings in the playoffs, if the Vikings make it there, the Lions if they make it there, the Vikings with Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, the Lions now with Amon Ross St. Brown, Jamison Williams finally getting integrated into that offense, Sam Laporta getting better every week. Those offenses, if the Eagles offense starts slow like it has been and those offenses get hot in one game, that's all you need in the playoffs, this Eagles team becomes very beatable. And that's what we saw playing this 49ers team. I'm going to push back on one part of that. You may not have watched the uh, star man take on the Chicago Bears. High-powered passing attack. I is, said above average. I did not I say high-powered. I don't think I'd say above average anymore. Scored nine points against Chicago, man. Let, <laughs> let's pump the brakes of the Vikings here. Let's not set us up to be a mercy rule by the Eagles. Let's not do that. But yeah, I agree that the defense is the issue. You can win games in the NFL. They scored a bunch against the Bills. They scored a decent amount against most teams they played. You can win games scoring 20 to 30 points. That defense, it's cooked. I, don't, I think the core issue is their elite pass rushers, Carter, uh, Reddick, those guys, Cox, they are no longer generating a lot of pressure. The pressure rate has gone down. They are no longer sacking the quarterback. They are no longer coming up, covering up some of those weaknesses, which were present in last year's secondary, certainly got worse without CJ, and now it is on full display. I'd still say Eagles second, third best team in the NFC. If the Cowboys beat them next week in Jerry World, I have no problem sliding in Dallas above them, but... Clearly not the top dog anymore, and I am very happy about well, that. Well, something that's even more concerning about the 49ers game is this Eagles team, they can beat anyone if their offense starts the game hot and they have things going because then all they have to do is outscore the other team, win a game in a 35-28 to 28 matchup because their pass rush, it's good enough to get one, two, maybe even three stops. I mean, if, they, if the opponent knows or the uh, Philly defense knows they're going to pass, they can generate pressure, but through normal gameplay, they just can't anymore. No, I'm just saying, in a game where the offense is firing on all cylinders from the start, this Eagles team with A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith, DeAndre Swift, with all those guys, they have enough talent to beat anyone. But when they start slow, like they've done over the last four weeks, and their defense is playing like it is, 
it's going to be a lot harder to beat these very good teams or these teams that have offenses that are capable of producing at a high and, most importantly, consistent level. And we haven't had consistency from the Eagles. And the most concerning thing, even more than the pass defense, because that's been bad all year, is the fact against the Chiefs, uh, Isaiah Pacheco averaged near, it felt like, six yards a carry. Christian McCaffrey was gashing them all night long. So are there is the run defense falling apart now? Yeah, that. They're not in a good spot. We've got kind of beaten that nail over the head. I'll say one more thing. Jalen Hurts is still clearly a top 10 quarterback, but the number inflation of touchdowns via the tush push, I don't feel it, man. He is not, he should not be in the MVP conversation. Hopefully, this loss will finally be the one to take him out of it. But he has not been playing like a top five quarterback this year. Well, I think the last four games have taken him out of that MVP conversation because he had he struggled to get 200 yards in the two games prior to this he played very bad in the first three quarters of the Chiefs game the offense didn't look great at all I mean, he was the MVP front runner last week before this game I mean he was but I think in the back of everyone's minds are like I don't know how much he deserves it he's had some rough games a few times in a row they still won but we're still going to put him up there and the one thing now I know I just said something negative about Hertz but the one thing I want to push back on is the people who hate on his uh, QB sneak rushing touchdown totals. You know, I think the Rams punter should actually go under center and start running that. You've seen that video, right? Of him repping 585 on squat twice. He should do it then. He should do it. The Rams could do that. They don't quite have the same. Yep, the Philadelphia Eagles, they barely use their punter anyway. Trade for the Rams punter. Put him under center and demonstrate the two <laughs> the true string the offensive line. I'm serious. That dude's got crazy strong legs. I'm feeling that. I'm amazed you didn't know about that video. You know about that video. I do not. Oh, you will have an enjoyable watch of that when we get done recording. Anyway, they, they hate so much on the fact that they get all these touchdowns off the tush push, and they hate on his rushing touchdown total and the fact that he's passed Cam Newton. But if he wasn't doing that, guess what? He'd just have more touchdown passes off play action, and he'd lose a two to short runs to the DeAndre Swift or Boston Rashad Scott. Penny, Boston, Boston Scott, Kenneth Gainwell, any of the other running backs on that offense. So he'd have more passing touchdowns off of play action plays or even just other pass plays and there'd be one to four more touchdowns for one of the running backs. So the fact that he uses such a big slight against him, I personally think is a little ridiculous, especially when I think he has around 400 something rushing yards this year as well. And still like what, 13 rushing touchdowns, that is... That is touchdown inflation. But we have beaten the Eagles topic to death, so unless you've got anything else, I don't think we really need to talk about the Cowboys. They beat a team above 500, although that team is now at 500. Good squad, been saying all year. Better than anticipated. That defense let them down, but that offense got hot. Not I really. think they beat the Eagles next week. It's not the predictions video, but the predictions video. Jalen Hurts might have a concussion, so that will probably help. <laughs> but I, I mean, the Cowboys... Very good team. Uh, Brandon Cooks, I think the biggest storylines, the only things we really need to address right now is that Brandon Cooks and Jake Ferguson has emer have emerged as a second and third options on that offense. Tony Pollard and has still been not quite as good as he was last year and in the past and as explosive. If they have those second and third receiving options, it makes their offense that more lethal and capable of certainly beating Philadelphia and even competing more uh, with the 49ers, who they struggled to beat early in the year. San Fran matches up really well against them. And I think those two guys emerging has a lot more to do with the fact defenses have come to the realization, oh, damn, we got a double CD, rather than them suddenly developing the skill to get open. But keeping it rolling from the NFC's number one seed to a team which was previously the AFC's one seed, the Kansas City Chiefs, the mighty Chiefs, the reigning Super Bowl champion Chiefs, strolled on up to Lambeau Field to victimize the Green Bay Packers. And people were making fun of the Chiefs for getting flecked into, pri into prime time with this game. They said, ah, oh, we don't need to see another blowout. We don't need to see another bad game. You know, they were sort of right because the Packers manhandled them. The Packers were better at all aspects of football last evening. Plain and simple. They had a better quarterback. They had a better offensive line. They had a better defense. And they had better receivers last evening. They looked phenomenal. This is the Packers team your mama warned you about. It is a scary, scary squad. We are back to three Hall of Famers in a row narratives up in Green Bay. Granted, that is by far the best game of Jordan Love's career, and he may have peaked. Dear God, please. But still, <laughs> I'm a big fan of what I saw from him. Arm down there. Athleticism there. Outdueled Patrick Mahomes with, some would say, inferior weapons. Certainly an inferior tight end. What more is there to say? I love that, man. I mean, the Chiefs, I kind of been saying they're fraudulent for a while. We're just going to call everyone who's winning frauds, all right? Everyone but the Minnesota <laughs> Vikings and the New York football giants. The New York giants are a tough, what, four and eight? 
<laughs> they are real for a Tommy Palmer's might not lose a game this season and they might go to the playoffs. Those are the only two non frauds. We like They're in the, the hunt. Non-frauds. Everyone in the AFC is in the hunt besides the They're Rams. in the hunt for a top five pick and a playoff spot. Oh, the suspense is building. And when it comes to the Packers, you know, they kind of they just keep doing their thing. Everyone criticized them for never taking a first round receiver, they never really taking a first round skill position, not supporting the offensive side of the ball, but the receivers, Chris. Christian Watson, Jaden Reed, I think it's Deontay Wicks. They're very talented players, and they're developing within that Packers offense. They have been getting things going. So the Packers, they just keep doing their own thing, and it looks like it may work again, unfortunately for NFC North fans. And then when it comes to the Chiefs, I think very much so like the Eagles. They have one major weakness that is going to ruin their chances at repeating at going to the Super Bowl. Their receiver core is just not good enough. Their defense, very good. Their offensive line, very good. Isaiah Pacheco has emerged as a very good running back. I mean, he was having a great game against the Packers, but with Travis Kelsey having a down year, receivers not being able to consistently get open or have a guy that Patrick Mahomes can trust consistently, they're rotating through Kadarius Toney. Sky Moore, MVS, Rasheed Rice, actually Nicole Hardman, Rasheed job. Rice. They have six receivers that get involved in the game are constantly rotating through. No one gets in a groove. Someone drops it. They don't get the ball thrown to them again. There's nothing consistent about that Chiefs wide receiver room, and I think that is their biggest problem. And I was very confident. I've been saying the Chiefs are still the best team in the NFL. I don't care what happens. Week in, week out. After this game, it's now... Three, I don't count week one, it's now three times this has happened where the receivers didn't show up, they struggled in the pass game, they struggled to move the ball, and the story of this Chiefs team now, in years past, offense was explosive. They can move the ball down the field at will. Now, I don't know if I've ever felt this way when watching the Chiefs before, they get down by two scores, and you don't know if they can come back because the receivers aren't good enough, or the offense isn't as explosive enough, and Travis Kelsey... Looks like he may be a slightly divin- diminished version of himself. Yeah, I mean, he's Walmart TJ Hawkinson right now. They're a ground and pound offense, plain and simple. That's how they're using Isaiah Pacheco. They're letting him run angry downhill. And if that doesn't work out, they get in trouble. I think the Chiefs can figure this out. The big thing which is making me say that is Rasheed Rice has been good in a small role. The reason that role is small is not because of some inferiority to the guys around him. Certainly not that. It's because it's really hard for a rookie wide receiver to go into that Andy Reid offense and immediately pick it up and play 80% of the snaps. I think as the year goes on, you see the snap count rise. He will probably take over number one receiver dudes. He doesn't really have the drop issues to the same extent the other guys have. If he can get going next to Kelsey, take a little bit of the heat off Kelsey, the Chiefs will be fine. If that doesn't happen, if he can't figure out the offense, though, and uh, Reed can't use him the right way, they're not going to the Super Bowl again. Played it simple. Well, I, I think, too, speaking to that point, I think Rasheed Rice, you're right, he is the way the Chiefs' offense can get things figured out. Because you, and you speaking to the rookie wide receiver thing, Sky Moore did nothing his rookie year. This year, he's at least improved, but it looks like he's not going to be a high-level NFL receiver. Rasheed Rice has looked very good this year. He scored a lot of touchdowns for the Chiefs. And if they're able to involve him in the game plan more and take some of the heat off Travis Kelsey, that'll open up their entire offense. They need someone who can at least function as a number one receiver. He doesn't need to be elite. He doesn't need to be CeeDee Lamb. He doesn't need to be Justin Jefferson. He doesn't need to be A.J. Brown. If it can be some semblance of a number one target or a high level target that can they can uh, get seven uh, catches to a game in consistent production, this could fix the Chiefs offense. I just don't know if it's going to happen because, it, you know, it, play, playoff time will tell, but... I think it'd be George Pickens, uh, the Chiefs will be set. Now, to pivot a little bit from one AFC team, which had some problems offensively to another, it bears discussing the Patriots game, man. That is an amusing final score. 79 times in the storied history of football has a game ended into a 6-0 score. I don't know of a single one of those games besides the Chargers-Patriots game happened in the 21st century. Happened after 1962. What are we doing here, Chargers? You cannot blame Staley for this one. You cannot put a shutout of the New England Patriots and only a winning shutout by of the six. Patriots. Oh, da, 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 da. Now, they shut them out. <laughs> You must respect that. They gave Justin Herbert the ball over and over and over again, and he still couldn't do anything. My narrative's blossoming. My hatred of Herbert 
continues to grow. That man stinks. Derek Carr lit up this Patriots team for what, 40 points, give or take? And Herbert can't crack 10. He can't outscore Tommy Parms, Tommy Cutlets, Tommy DeVito. He can't do that. This guy stinks. Get him out of here, man. He got well, Keenan Allen. Best game of Quinn Johnson's career, maybe. Austin Eckler. With a very big drop. Oh, boo-hoo. That would have been an extra 15, 20 yards. Three more points. Still want to crack double digits. Herbert stinks, man. <laughs> Herbert does not stink. The Patriots' offense is horrible. I mean, them not being able to score or move the ball at all probably has something to do with the only functioning player on their offense leaving the game in Ramondre Stevenson. They had to go to Zeke, who also was questionable even heading into the matchup. That Patriots' offense has close to zero talent on it. So when you have, who's it, Bailey Zappi was starting at quarterback for them. When you have Bailey Zappi, Mac Jones, no offensive talent around you, it's not going to be that hard to stop them to zero points. So Brandon Staley gets no credit here. The only thing he gets credit for is overseeing an offense and being the head coach of an oh, offense. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. You're cutting calling, me off again. He's calling the defensive plays, but suddenly he's overseeing the offense. He should oversee a new quarterback. So you think the Chargers should keep Brandon Staley next year? I think there is more blame to go around in that building than just saying, oh, Brandon Staley's fault. It's like old Kyle McCoy and Kyle McCown, Kyle McCaskey transferring from Ohio State. He's being used as a scapegoat. That team had a ton of issues, and quarterback was not the biggest one. Biggest one... Might be head coach in Ohio, might be quarterback in Los Angeles. The biggest one is the head coach and the defense being one of the worst in the NFL over the course of the season. Whoopi, they allowed zero points to a team that has two wins, Bailey Zappi and Mac Jones moving back and forth as a starting quarterbacks. whoop de doo good for the Chargers defense. I'm glad they, they got that well notch on their resume too. this season. Played much better than Chiefs defense did against the Green Bay Packers in their last matchup. Herbert still couldn't win that. Here's, what's, you want to tell here's what's going to happen. There are two outcomes here. One, Belichick defects and go coaches the and goes to coach the Chargers next year. Or two, Brian Flores, after having an elite defensive season, and dear God, I hope this doesn't happen. It's the quarterback he wanted over to a tongue of a low the entire time and becomes the Chargers head coach. Either way, I am not going to be uh, overly pleased if either of those two things goes down. Well, I'd imagine it'll be the Lions OC. Eh. I don't know, man. They love their defensive-minded head coaches over there in L.A. <laughs> or maybe it'll say Brandon Staley. One can only hope. Anyway, because we got told to do outros now, thank you for watching if you're still here. Be sure to hit that like button, follow us, share, subscribe. Your support is truly appreciated. And if we get up to 9,000 subscribers by Christmas, I will tell all of you where I got this lovely little Grinch hat. Code thick. Code thick. Two C's, underdog. Yeah. yeah.